Hi there, David here, and in this video, we'll be redesigning some sounds from Donkey Kong Country. All right, so here we are inside of Reaper, and what I'd like to do is just start with the original game audio so we have a reference sound that we can reference and hear, and then we'll go over the redesign, and then, of course, we're going to go down, uh, break down each individual, individual sound and how I created those. All right, so let's get started here. This is going to be the original sound from the uh, original game. And by the way, this is Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze on the uh, Nintendo Switch. All right, so that was the original game audio, and now let's have a listen to the redesign. And just keep in mind here as we're listening to the redesign is that there's not going to be any music, which of course is a big part of this game. So there won't be any music and of course any character sounds. So I tried to avoid all the character sounds um, and the grunts and like stuff like that. So just to keep that in mind. All right, let's have a listen. All right, so that was the full redesign. Now let's go into this and let's start breaking it down um, by individual sounds. All right, so one of the first sounds that we heard in this redesign is the banana sound. And the banana sound is just such an, uh, an iconic kind of sound from this game especially. So let's just have a listen to the sound here that I, that I created and then we'll go back and uh, I'll show you how I created it. So this is the sound right here. So there's actually like two kind of versions of it. Like there's the 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 banana bunch when you get a banana bunch, and here you can see like they're very very close together. Here I have them I think close to like sixty fourths, like one sixty fourth. Okay, and then just the individual bananas is the other sound. So let's go into Faceplant here, and I'll show you how I created this sound. So actually, this is the sound that I just imported into here. So I just imported that into here so that I could create the banana bunch sound because if not, it was kind of uh, hard to do. So that way I could just, you know, set it up on my, as a MIDI trigger. And then every time I, I hit it, I, then I can get the banana sound. But for the actual sound, this little click sound, the way I created that, let's look at it. I have it in another sub project here. So let's look at that. All right. So here I have my face plant preset that I used to actually create this banana sound. So here it is. And what I have here inside of the sample is what I call my sampling sound design or design sound design for, for sampling. And what these are are basically long files that I've kind of printed out and so that I could go through and like uh, sample them. So this I'll, I'll play a part of it here so that you can have a listen to what it sounds like, what, like what I uh, exported here. So let's have a listen and then I'll go back and actually show you how I made the sound here. So this is what that file sounds like here. It sounds like this. I'm just going to turn this off. Right, and then it just keeps going like that. And the way that I created that is I was just using a sine wave inside of Faceplant, and then I had a portal, so the plugin portal uh, by, um, I think it's Output, and then um, I just had a preset from that, and then I, I was basically just playing on my keyboard and exporting all this out. Once I had that imported out, sorry, exported out, I imported it back into here in my sampler, and then I was able to just scan through here to find the sound. And the way that I found it, or the way that I created the sound here, is by changing the decay and the sustain. So originally, um, you start with 100% sustain. I brought it all the way down to zero because I just wanted to have a really, really short decay. And that's what makes this sound. So if I make it really long here, right, you can start to hear that file. But if I bring it back down to what I had it around like 47 here, then you have this really short clicky sound. And that I found was very, very close to that banana sound. So all I'm doing here to create that banana sound now is playing really quickly in octaves. Once I have that, uh, then I could just print out that sound in octaves. And that's exactly what I did here. I just printed it out, I brought it into here, and now basically I could use that into uh, in my design here. And I also, like I said, imported it into the face plant here so that I could play the banana bunch every time that uh, you know Donkey Kong has a banana bunch here. So that's how I created this sound here. All right, and just one short quick note here about these banana sounds before we move on. Um, one is that I was using recenter here just to really um, 
narrow in the sound and bring it all the way into the center. So I didn't want it to be too wide. I really wanted to keep it mono. So yeah, that's what I did here. Uh, also for the, when I actually designed it, you, you'll see here, I used Uberloud. This was just to kind of push up the sound and kind of flatten it out a bit in terms of dynamics. So that's how I, I used this. So not much there, but just little details. So, all right, next, let's go all over to our banana coin sound. So let's have a listen to it here and then uh, we'll break it down by layer. Here we go. All right, so that's the banana coin sound I created. And there's actually two layers to this one. So let's have a listen to the first one. So they're both just playing in octaves. And uh, when you play them together, it sounds like this. And what you'll notice and what you'll hear uh, is that there's a, they're kind of ping-ponging uh, left and right in the stereo field. So the way that I created that is right here. So the way I created it is um, I, I used, again, a face plant here. And I'll, I'll show you kind of the details of once I go in. But for the actual the ping-pong effect, I actually manually put it in so that I had it pan left and right. Uh, as it was playing. And you can see here, what I'm using here is an E major triad. So that's what I'm playing here, E, B, E, B, and then G sharp, B, E. So that is the sound here. So if I play this here from here, that is like the, the, the pattern, the sound. And what I did, similar again to the banana sound here, uh, what I did again here, I just exported another file. This is a different file here. I have number 126, the other one was 125. Uh, but yeah, I, again, I'm just scanning through here. A similar thing, I was using a sine wave, nothing special here with a portal preset. And then I just brought the sustain down. I did the decay until it was like a, a nice length. I added a delay here. And that's it. Yeah, so I like this sound. Of course, I could have gone in and... I could have gone in and try to find other sounds that I like. Right, I have this huge file that I could have played with, uh, but I really like this sound over here, so. By the way, if you want to see how I create these files or how I, I come about like designing these, uh, I did make a video about it, so I'll put it up in the cards above if you're interested in checking it out. So check it out up there if you want, want to see how I create like these files and these sounds here. All right, so once I had that, then that was it. So then I, this I just exported out as an audio file, and then I just imported it back into here. And I, like I said, I did two different takes of it, and then I layered them together, and that's it. Like there's nothing uh, too special or anything going on here. Like I have a gain knob here. This is just to balance it out together. Well, that's it. That That is how I created the banana coin sound. All right, let's go over to our uh, next sound that's happening here, and that is going to be the dodo uh, bird uh, squawk, if you will. So the way I created that was um, entirely with my voice. I used my voice to do it. So let's let's remove some of these uh, effects here, like this. Let's have a listen to what it sounds like on its own. It might might be kind of funny, but let's have a listen. So right now you're actually only hearing one of the sounds, and the reason for that is because I am using I was using transmutator to blend the two sounds together. So if we start here, so you'll see here, I have transmutator on this take here. So if I play just this take here, that is what it sounds like with just has that take on its own. And the way I created that is I just did like a squawk with my voice and then I added a few plugins here. So let's go over these really quickly. I have first an EQ to cut out the lows because I just didn't need it. Gain, this, is, uh, this gain is just to balance out the sound with the other uh, layer here. Transmutator, this is uh, the core of the sound. So I use the dynamic preset and I put the dry, wet dry about 77%. And then you'll see here, I'm automating the knob here. And the way that I'm doing that is with an LFO. So if I click on this thing is I'm using the LFO here the, uh, from the parameter modulation built within Reaper. I'm using the audio signal uh, to uh, automate the sound. So I just put it so that it's like a slow attack, well, medium to slow attack, medium to slow release. And so every time there's a signal, it, it gets a signal, it's gonna move uh, more towards the B sound and then back towards A. So you just get a nice blend of the two sounds and you just get the movement, right? Because if not, it'd be kind of static. And uh, I just like doing it this way because then you get more movement in the sound. So that was that. And then after that, it was just using recenter to kind of position the sound in the stereo field uh, and just keep it mostly mono or very close to mono. So that is that sound here. This second sound here, again, it's very similar. It's just a different take of, of, of my, my go at the sound. And I just used Dehumanizer here. Uh, I was trying to kind of design something. I didn't end up um, doing much with this. It's just a pitch shifter, uh, pitch shifted up to. So I probably just could have used a pitch shifter in the end, but I was trying to do something with that. So 
Uh, again, here you have recenter just to center it and mono it, keep it narrow and center it. And you have your EQ to cut out the, the lows, your gain to balance it out. And, and you have spectre here just to boost some of the frequencies here. Together, this is what we have. Right, and that's how I created that. And you'll notice here I have two effects on here. One is uber loud just to bring out some of the sounds. Right, this is just to really bring out some of the mids and the highs, because if not, they're they're kind of blended in, and you don't you don't hear them very well. And then here, I just have a multiband compressor. All right, so that is the Dota Bird sound. All right, let's move on to this um, like flower uh, sound here, where he like hits the ground, gets a the flower kind of opens up and releases a banana. So let's have a listen to that right over here. All right, so for this flower sound, there's actually three, if I'm not mistaken, different uh, layers or portions of, of the sound. So one is gonna is the like the low rumble, which is right down here. So let's have a listen to this. So this is just him smacking the ground. And the way that I created this was using a uh, one of my like bass sweetener sounds that I have. It's basically just like an, an impact sound that I created using my, again, my sampling sound design sounds. So I just uh, imported this into here. I just cut it up, chopped it up, and put it into so that it matched the, uh, the sound here. And that's it. Uh, I might have done a bit of LKC variator to randomize uh, some of the parameters here. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So I have here, I have Ubla to bring out some of the bass EQ to lower some of the some of the highs, recenter again, just keep everything as, as narrow as possible because this game is, of course, when it first came out was mostly 2D. So I'm, I'm still trying to kind of keep, keep the sounds focused into the uh, space in the stereo field where they're supposed to be just because it's a 2D game. Like you don't ever want it to be too wide. It just wouldn't make sense. So that's what I'm doing here. Uh, again, here, just boosting a little bit of the bass and again, a bit more here with this EQ. All right, so that is one layer. There's another layer here, which is like the glitter layer. Sounds like this. So this is the sound of the like the banana being released. So let's have a look at how I created this one. So this one, again, it's inside of a uh, faceplant. I use, again, same idea as before with my sampling sound design. And I use a decay length of 136 here. I also have a delay. The mix is very low on this one. And I also put the ducking really high. So what that does is that whenever I have the signal from the sound here going into the delay, it's going to duck the delay sound until the original sig signal is done. So uh, it's never the delay is never going to overtake the original signal. Right, and then it's a very sh well, re relatively short feedback, so it, it doesn't last too long. So if I just play a note here, right, it doesn't last too long, and that's what I was going for. I didn't want it to like ring out for a long time. It's just to have that sense of space and 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 sh uh, glitter, if you will. All right, so that's how I created that, and then the way that I played it is I just basically did a glitch on my keyboard, right. So I just like slid my fingers across the keyboard. I got that sound. Uh, here, I'm just adding a few things here, uh, pushing a bit of the mids, a bit of the highs with uber loud. Uh, I have a gain just to, to really lower the sound because it's like way too loud. This is just my preference. Like I like to lower gain using this rather than lowering it on uh, on the item itself. So yeah, there's that. And then here, I'm really cutting out a lot of the sound. So if I take this sound off here, let's have a listen to it so you hear what it sounds like without this EQ on. It's not a big difference, but it's just really cleaning up the sound here uh, just to keep it as clean as possible. And that's basically it for this glitter sound. So together we have this so far, right? And then you have uh, like a tonal element as well when he hits the grounds here. So in the original, we if you would listen here, we have a tonal sound. You have the don't do So this tonal sound is this that I created right here. So it's not exactly the same, but it's similar. So let's have a listen to these here. So there's two sound, two layers. This is the first layer, and then I also have this. So together it creates this sound. And if you listen really closely, it's actually not super clean. You have this, this little like sound at the end of the end of the file here. I probably could have cleaned it up a little bit more with a, a better uh, fade. But yeah, that's the sound. And the way that I created that, I'll show you in the uh, sub project here. All right, so here it is, this uh, tonal sound that I created. It's actually from, again, from one of these like really short sounds that I created using my, again, my sampling sound design that I call it. Um, so it's right here. And basically all I did is I, I, I had this like really cool sound that I like, but then I just went down uh, like a few octaves on my keyboard until I got this. Uh, and I had this like nice kind of percussive bouncy sound, which is exactly what I wanted. 
I did a bit of distortion, and that's basically it. I don't think the stereo is doing anything. It's keeping it centered. I don't know why it's all the way to the right. Anyways, so yeah, so this is keeping it centered. There you have it. After that is basically just a matter of like tuning it to get to to get the right like um, tuning and tone to match the other sounds. And with that, I had uh, all these three sounds together. It sounds like this. All right, so you get the low rubble, the tone, and then you also have the glitter on top. So you get all these three layers that are taking up different frequencies that just make up the sound. All right, let's go to this next sound here, which is the Kong coin. So this is the sound that I created. Let's have a look at how I actually designed this. So for the Kong coin, I used a similar uh, idea as before here. For this uh, file though, I used to, to create like this long file, this long design file, I used a sine wave portal and a, a magic dice. Magic dice, by the way, is a free plugin that you can get from Baby Audio, if I'm not mistaken. And it's basically a reverb and delay all in one. Plus portal was like another like delay. So I had this really cool file that sounded like. So I'm actually playing it backwards right now. But if I play it forward, it sounds like this. Right, so you can hear it's a very reverb, a lot of like delay and stuff. So that's the sound. I just reversed it. And you'll see here, I also applied an LFO to the, yeah, the tuning here, the pitch and uh, LFO to the gain. Right, so that you just get a bit of a louder attack. And with that now, I could just play some chords like this. Right, and that's how I created this sound. Uh, again, I don't think this was the exact preset that I used here. I probably like played around with this file to see kind of the, a nice spot that I could get it at. But that's how I created this file here. You can hear there's also a delay on there that I added. It's already printed out on here, but it's, it was nothing special. It's just a regular delay, and that's it. All right, let's go to our next sound here, which is going to be our rocks. So the rocks here has three different parts to it, three different layers or categories. So let's have a listen to each one here. This is the first one and let's have a listen. So this is the noise. So it's very noise based and they're just like these attacks. And then, so I'll, I'll go and so listen to these individually and then I'll go into how I created these here. Next one, we had this tonal sound, which if you listen to the original, it was kind of in there. It's really hard to hear, uh, but this is kind of like my version of it. So let's have a listen. Okay, it sounds like that. And then we also had a regular uh, tonal ground smack from before when we were hitting the flower. All right, it's the exact same sound here. So I won't go over this layer again, but that is that there. Okay, so let's go over these sounds and how I created these. So let's have a listen. I'm gonna remove the effects here. So as you can see, the effects are just really adding some of the like uh, the lowers, uh, the, the lows and the mids in the sound. That's what I'm doing with Ubelard here. Recenter, again, this is to position the sound in the stereo field. So I'm putting it a little bit on the left because the character's on the left. But again, I'm trying to keep it uh, mostly centered. And I think this sound was already like a mono sound, so I didn't have to narrow the width too much, which is why it's like that. Gain, just, just to balance the sound. And then again, Uber loud, uh, just to push a bit of the lows here again. All right, so I couldn't find the exact faceplant preset that I used to create this, but the way that I remember creating this is I was using a noise file, a noise generator inside of faceplant, and I think I was doing a similar thing as I was doing before, just using some delays, and I think it was that. And then I basically, I printed out uh, the sound, I brought it back into faceplant, and I was just playing around with the uh, attack to case sustain release till I got a sound that, that kind of sounded like an impact. I probably added some transient shapers and stuff like that just to make it a bit more punchy. And then once I had a, a sound, that I was happy with and I just kind of printed it out and then brought it in here and then I could play across my keyboard too like so I could pitch it up and down. So that's how I created that sound. And it's the same idea here when I'm when the he's also smacking the ground over here. I think here you'll, you'll, you can hear and notice that it sounds a bit different. And the reason for that is because I uh, automated some, some parameters here. So I'm moving, I'm panning, changing the panning with recenter. And I'm also changing the uber loud presets here. So you'll see here, I think it changes a bit here. So I'm getting a bit more highs just to make it a bit different so it doesn't sound the exact same. Yeah, so I'm just changing some of the uber loud parameters just so they change kind of the, the feel of the sound. All right, so that is that, that's a noise layer. And now here I have another layer, which is this one. All right, so this like weird noise layer, uh, it kind of feels in the uh, the frequencies in the higher frequencies for the like it balances out with the noise, which is more mids and lows. And then this was supposed to be like more of the the highs. 
uh, but like still kind of noise based. So the way I created that is I had just a glitch sound effect. So if I take off all my stuff here, let's have a listen to it on its own. Right, it's just like a, a, an impact, this gl really basic glitch impact that I had. And the way that I created that, let's undo this here. Let's go into how I created that. So I just brought down the gain a lot, this is really, really loud. And I used M transformer to create the sound. So let's have a listen. And the way that I did that is just putting up the spectrum uh, knob here. That's it. That's I think that's the only thing I touched in here. And it, it just made that sound just like that. After that, it was just a matter of cutting out some of the lows, which I have right there. And then here I added some other effects like recenter just to put the sound a bit to the left here. And I also have manipulator here. This, I just brought it down so it wasn't so bassy. So if I play it with it, right? So just a little bass here. And then I have my gain here just to, again, balance out this out some more. So all three of these are the exact same sound. There are different lengths because I just wanted them to be a bit different. And then the end just needed more tail. So that's why these are like that. So, so far now we have this noise sound here. And then the final part was the tonal here. And that's it. This, this is what made this entire rock sound. All right, let's go to the grasshopper at the end. This one is pretty easy and it'll be pretty quick because this one actually, I didn't even design the sound. I imported it from a preset from an, another library that I had. So I kind of cheated for this one, which is why I'm just kind of going to quickly kind of skip over it. Uh, but this is the sound. I'm going to just kind of take everything off here. This is what it sounds like. Okay, and now with all the effects on here, it sounds like this. And most of that is just really bringing down the uh, sound, cutting out a lot of the lows. I didn't need this to be loud at all. Put it to the right a little bit, narrowed it a lot, and that's pretty much it. Gain, again, down a lot. Just I just wanted this to be just felt more than heard. So it's there, so you kind of know that the creature's there, but it's not in your face. Anyway, so that is the grasshopper sound. All right, let's go over this kill notification sound. So it sounds like this. So you get this like clicky sound every time you like jump on top of a character. And you also have this other sound here where... So it's kind of like this bassy like hit punch, if you will. And then you get this like click, click. Um, yeah, the way that I created that, again, same idea. I won't go into details about like how I did it inside of my face plant thing, but it's the same idea. I had my, my long files, imported it, brought down the uh, sustain and the decay really short. That I had this clicky sound and that's what, what I used here. And I also, I had two layers here. So this is uh, the first layer. That's the main sound that you're hearing. I also had this one here. Right, so a bit more clicky and together they just sound like this. Right, and I'm also just using M -trans, uh, sorry, track spacer here just not to mask any of the frequencies within these two sounds and really making sure that this is the sound that kind of that shines through because it's the most important. If I take this effects off here, right, you can hear it's very wide. Recenter really helps to center it. Right, just really narrowed it down. I also had added an EQ just to boost some of the sound at around two to 300. Same thing with Spectre here, just really boosting the mids here. Right, and that's how I got that sound. All right, for the jump portion, it sounds like this. So again, these have two layers. This is the main layer here. And this is just the kick that I created. Yeah, so that was just, I just kind of a drag and drop. And here I had another sound. This was a sound from, uh, again, one of my libraries that I created. Yeah, I just dragged it in here. Kind of sounded interesting. And so that's why I put it here. I had like a lot of, I felt like it had character to it rather than just having like a boom. You have this other layer. So if I just play this on its own, it sounds kind of boring. But with this now, it sounds kind of like he's rebounding or something like that. So that's why I had that in there. So for the kick here, if I play with everything off, it sounds like this. All right, a lot of high frequencies and it's very loud. So if I take everything off, without the EQ, it sounds like this. With the EQ. So this was just to balance out like the sound. I just didn't want any highs and cutting out some of the muddiness here around 300. And then uh, just some of the sub because I just didn't need that sub. Right, using recenter to really narrow the sound and uh, also had a mono filter on there. Gain to reduce the gain. And another EQ to reduce some of the highs even more. So without it, with it. And that is that sound. All right, I think that is most of our sounds. We have a few other ones here that I'm going to go over kind of quickly here. But here we go. Let's go through these. So these are mostly the landing sounds. So like when he's landing on the ground and these are just like sweeteners that I brought into my session. So if you have a listen to these, these are like just sounds that I had in my library, right? It's just a bass like impact. And if I take it off, this is what it sounds like. Very heavy. So what I did here is I just put on recenter 
made it really, really wide here, cut out some of the highs, brought out a lot of the lows. So it sounds, it like feels very heavy, made it again more wide, and then really brought down the sound. Right, really brought down the gain. So I was trying to make it a, a wide sound, something that was felt more on the outsides than in the center here. And I did the same idea here with these with these uh, plugins here. It's basically the same processing, right? Another sound I have here is this one here. So when he's landing on the rocks, I wanted something to be a bit more bassy or thuddy because it matched more the original. So that's what this is here. And again, this is just a sub impact that I just kind of really chopped up. I brought in a fade like really, really short. And then I just put the gain all the way down. So there's like no processing happening on there. All right, and the last landing sound here is when he lands like on the grass. All right, so here we have two layers. Again, these are just my sweeteners. So they're just like bass impacts. Sounds like that. And I have this one here, a bit bassier. And uh, it's just a matter of like shaping the sound. So here I'm using format shift to pitch it down a little bit. And also sounds like this. So if I take it off, this is the original sound here. You get very crunchy. This didn't make sense. So with Uber Loud here, brought out some of the mids and lows. Makes it a bit more in your face and brings out the character of the sound a lot more. Brought the gain down because it was way too loud. And then M Transformer here sounds like this. All right, so it just makes it a bit deeper. So that's that sound. This sound here, not much happening. That's like the original sound. I just brought in Recenter to keep it centered. And then Track Spacer just, just to not have any masking with the other sound here. So that is it for these ones. So those are all of the like jumping and landing sounds here. All right, so let's go through this one more time. I'll play the original and then we'll play the re redesign and uh, have a listen to the sounds from the original and the sounds also from the redesign. See if you can pick these out, pick out the elements and, and the different layers and things that we talked about. And yeah, so let's have a listen. So this is gonna be the original game audio. Here we go. and the redesign. All right, so I hope you liked that and you found it useful in seeing how you can create these sounds for yourself. Like I said in the video, if you wanna see more or go more in depth on how to create uh, the sounds yourself using this technique that I showed a lot in this video, I'll put a, a, a link in the cards above if you wanna check it out on, on the technique that I use to create the sound effect. So uh, yeah, make sure you check that out. If you haven't already, make sure you check out the link below for the uh, sound pack, the free sound pack, my sound designer starter pack. And also if you have any questions, comments, whatever, leave them down in the description below. I'm always happy to answer your questions and, and talk to you guys. So I think that's it for now. Thanks so much for watching and make it through all the way to the end. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.